let us first focus on what is Server Administrator. Server Administrator is an agent that is installed on each of your servers. It is the most critical component in that its job is to listen to that server and communicate via SNMP any alerts that could occur from a failure of power supply, fans, temperature, and things of that nature. Let's now take a tour through uh, OpenManage and its capabilities. Server Administrator, again, installs on top of the operating system. Uh, its role is to communicate to the hardware layer and use SNMP to communicate any alerts up to the appropriate console. That console can be IT Assistant, it could be Operations Manager, it could be a variety of other enterprise consoles. It does operate out of a browser and communicates over port 1311. And its role when you first open up the browser is basically to give you a health status of the overall system. So you can see the green check marks means that everything is healthy. If there were some type of an issue, whether warning or critical, you would have either a yellow triangle or a red X. As far as its capabilities, let's take you through a quick tour of the software. Uh, on the tabs across the top, you have the ability to do, say, a graceful shutdown, reboot this server, power cycle this system. And everything you do see in the screen sits on a command line interface, so it's very easy to create a command line that gives you the ability to make changes in a one-to-many fashion. Log files, there are three sets of logs that are available. The first one is what has changed on the box. So what hardware changes have actually occurred, and it shows you the date and the time and the severity level of those types of changes. The alerts gives you alerts, uh, the SNMP traps that have been created as a result of changes. And then the command is probably one of the nicest features in Server Administrator in that not only does it tell you who logged in, but it tells you from where they logged in and what privileges did they have, as well as the date and the time. So a good amount of detail there. Under the Alert Management tab, you have the ability to make changes to the uh, different types of alerts that can be generated. We set up all of that stuff in the factory. There's no need for you to come in here and make changes, uh, but there is the ability to come in and say, uh, make chassis intrusion a non-critical thing if that's not something that's important in your environment. So you can change it from what is now a critical alert to an information alert if that's something you're okay with. Again, all of this sits on a command line, so you do have the ability to script that configuration. We do offer a complete suite of diagnostics. The diagnostics allow you to go through and test all of the components within the server platform. You have the ability to schedule these, and there is uh, enough intelligence in here that if, say, you're going to test the network card, it's going to tell you that I'm going to test the network card and I'm going to disconnect the server from the network. Are you sure you want to do this? In addition to the diagnostics, there is a hardware change log that occurs. So any changes that have ever occurred on the server platform, adding memory, removing power supplies, adding or removing disk drives is all going to be recorded here in the hardware change area. And you do have the ability, again, to, to review the status and schedule diagnostics. Down the left-hand side of the tree is all of the configuration capabilities on the server platform, as well as informational details. So by clicking uh, through the tabs, you can see a good amount of information uh, on the server platform, service tag, BMC, uh, version numbers. You can add and edit uh, asset tag information. You can also blink the uh, identity light on front of the server by checking that box right there. Let's look at BIOS configuration. So under the BIOS, if you click on the Setup tab, you have the ability to go in and make changes. Say, turn on NumLock, turn on or off NIC number two, change your boot sequence, turn on the virtualization technology in the ninth generation of server platforms. Uh, again, all of this stuff sits on that command line interface, so if I wanted to, say, create a custom configuration that included the ability to turn on NumLock, disable NIC number two, have my boot sequence to look in a particular order, all you would do is come in here and make those changes. You can capture what that looks like and then replicate that to all servers within your environment. As far as memory, 
you can see a great amount of detail about what type of memory is in the server, uh, including the sizes uh, of the memory and in which slot they're in. If there was any failure, they would obviously show turn into a red X or yellow triangle depending on the particular issue. With your networks settings, you can come in and make configuration changes here. On the remote access controller, what we've done is combine the baseboard management controller and DRAC functionality so that you can go in and communicate to this device over a single IP address. On the configuration tab, you define what that IP address could be. It could be a static IP or you can assign a range of uh, DHCP and support that. We do support VLAN so you can isolate this traffic from the rest of your production network. There are there is the ability to create users for the remote access controller. A more simple way to, to deal with remote access controllers, though, is to integrate them into your Active Directory environment, therefore giving you the ability to uh, associate your administrator groups to these devices just as you do your server platforms today. And then you have single sign-on capability and drill down into these chassis. Under the storage controller, in this particular server, I actually do have two RAID controllers. I have both an external one that's connected to a, uh, a SAS container, an MD-1000. So I can drill down and see all of the disks that are in it, as well as the status of all the components associated with that particular platform. And under the virtual disk area, I do have the ability to say, go in and reconfigure uh, a RAID 5 to uh, expand a RAID 5 with a 3 drive set to a, a RAID 5 with a 5 or a 6 drive set. Uh, it's all wizard driven, gives you the ability to go in and make changes uh, based on what disks are available. So you assign the, the disks that you want to add to the container, walk you through the wizard, and it will add those disks to a particular RAID 5 uh, container. In addition to that, you can I'll just exit out of here. The other things that you can accomplish from this screen include the ability to say change read policy, write policy, initialize your drives, assign hot spares, do consistency checks, and, and you can also blink the RAID sets so you know exactly which drives uh, you're working with uh, in your environment. That same feature and function is available down the perk uh, the integrated perk controller. Uh, on the night generation of servers, we do have now the ability to use either two and a half inch or three and a half inch disk drives. So we've extended our capacity and capability in adding the number of drives you want. That is the decision you make at the time of purchase on that server platform and support from that area. That is a pretty good tour of Server Administrator and its features and functions. This screen looks identical regardless of the operating system that it's installed on uh, or the platform that it's supported. So good overall view of Server Administrator and its capabilities. I thank you very much for your time.